So I work a lot with Forrester and Gartner and trying to get us some reports. And then I manage all of Looker's social media. So that means I run LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. And then I also run our employee ambassador uh, platform that, depending on the day, they call themselves voice storm and dynamic signal. But I manage and write all the copy for that as well. Awesome. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Kaya. Um, I'm a freelance social media marketer. Um, and I also have a small Instagram presence. So I come from the social media side of working on the ground, um, helping people with their Facebook, their Twitter, their LinkedIn. Most of my clients are startups um, and or small businesses. Uh, and then on the other side of that is that I have a small social media Instagram presence around the van. Uh, so I can speak to that from like a personal brand. Um, and yeah, I've been doing this in Santa Cruz for four years. I've worked with some of you in the audience. I've worked with Matthew for a little while. And um, yeah. And your following isn't that small. Yeah, well, it's, it's, yeah, I mean. Quite big? No, it's not really. I mean, like, if you're talking about influencers, like, I'm a micro, micro influencer, but yeah. Okay. Nice. Hi, guys. I'm, uh, my name is Kurosh. Um, I work at Plantronics, and I'm a social media specialist there. I specifically do social media for our enterprise side of the business. Uh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kayla. Um, I founded a company called Santa Cruz Social, and I work with retail and food and health and events and nonprofits, um, including Wharf to Wharf and a company called Bod Construct and Old School Shoes. And um, that's really my main focus. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Cool. Uh, I'm David Dennis. Um, I do three things. One is I'm a photographer and I do philanthropic photography projects to raise money for local nonprofits. I've been at Microsoft for 17 years. They now let me work out in my backyard down here at Mitchell's Cove. And I'm responsible for digital advertising for Outlook.com and Skype. We also now own LinkedIn, so I do a lot of work with LinkedIn. I'm also involved with a lot of partnership work with Facebook. And then I'm also the co-founder of Ventana Surfboards and Supplies. Uh, and we've built up that business primarily through social media. Awesome. Great, thank you. Um, I also want to mention too that Jared will be um, he's videotaping the whole thing, so if you <coughs> miss something, but you are from Brickhouse Media, so um, but if you need his information, let me know. I'll, I'll give you his card or you can ask him. But um, thank you so much for filming today. Okay, so here's the first question. This is like the dating game question. If you had to use one social media platform, what would you use and why? So you guys all have, you know, you come from a little bit different background. If you had to use one for um, for Looker, what would what would you use? Do you mean platform? Or yeah, like LinkedIn, Twitter. Yeah, 
not actually a platform to stand up, no. Um. I think for Looker, um, I mean, so for anyone who's not familiar with Looker, we're a data analytics and a business intelligence company, so we're primarily selling business to business. I think for us, if we had to pick one, I would say it would be LinkedIn, just because that's where our primary audience is. Um, especially from my experience, people aren't really looking on Facebook to find out how to do more with their data. <laughs> a little bit more on the consumer yeah. side. Um, so I would say I would definitely pick LinkedIn just because that's where we're gonna find a more technical audience. It's where people are more often looking for softwares that they're gonna use at work versus like their new favorite app or their new favorite consumer good. Um, we do a lot with LinkedIn, but I would also say just personal shout out to Twitter because I think LinkedIn has been really great for us as far as nurturing the, um, the followers and the engagement that we do have and connecting a lot with partners and current customers and really keeping those people involved. But as far as bringing in net new people and really broadening our audience, I would say Twitter and really utilizing hashtags and partners and retweets and industry influencers, like close second. Interesting. Does any of you feel the same way about Twitter? I was going to say the exact opposite. Yeah, this is definitely <laughs> <laughs> I just had a conversation. Yeah, we were the same exact opposite. Why? Uh, so, but I think that we both have very different industries. Um, you work with the company and you're very data analytics focused. Um, most of the people that I work with are small startups, and so I'm telling these really organic stories of people who are like excited about what they're doing, um, why they love it. And so, and for me, that's the exciting part, and that's why I do freelance social media marketing. It's put me in a place where I can work with people who are trying to tell, like, or work with people who are excited about their product or service on like a small scale and help them grow. Um, and then on like on my personal brand side, um, Instagram for me I think is the, the most important social media tool. I think if I was gonna give all, get rid of all the other ones, I would keep Instagram um, because I think that it does the best at telling a really intimate story. Um, and for me, it's all about the intimacy um, as far as social media, like we do talk about how um, it separates us, like we're always looking at our phones, and I think what people are looking for is that connection and that intimacy. So with face, uh, Instagram stories, similar to Snapchat, although I don't like Snapchat, um, it's like, what are you doing in your day-to-day -day life? And like, what are you, like, what is important to you about your brand, about your product, about your service? And so for me, it's a little bit more about um, storytelling. So I was gonna say the exact opposite. Like, I love Instagram, <laughs> I think that that would be, that would be the one. How about you? Never. Well, for the enterprise side of the business, I would have to go back to tomorrow, which you said LinkedIn is really good for us. Um, in a kind of cool way, LinkedIn gave us access to video beta, so being able to post native, native video on LinkedIn. Um, and that has helped our engagement on our video post a lot. Um, How long can the videos be? So the videos could be however long you want, but obviously between, I would say, 30 to 90 seconds are the best videos. Is that because you're though on the a beta program or like in anybody right now? Well, I thought, it, I thought there was restrictions on how long. Well, no, there's well the, the restrictions that they, that they gave us is just you can post whatever size video you want as long as people just want to see it or respond to it. So meaning like not if you, not all companies I think have access to that tool yet. So basically I saw it on a feed, I went to my LinkedIn rep and I was like, hey, could we, get access to this and he's like yeah sure so you get well not yeah sure but <laughs> yeah we had to whatever yeah we had to we had to do a little finagling but um uh, so he gave yeah they gave us it so we've seen that help us out a lot and why i guess not i guess why we like to use uh linkedin as a major form for enterprise content is because you know the change of that facebook algorithm which now reduces brand content, publisher content for friends and family. Um, I, I'm, I think we're going to see a huge shift of brands and companies going to LinkedIn and seeing that because it's just still a fee that you can just see a bunch of content. Like if you go to LinkedIn right now, just like a wealth of like randomness because people can just post and post and post, but they're responding to it, so. Great, thanks. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I can. Okay. <laughs> um, so for brands and retail businesses and food businesses and all the businesses that I work for, the main tool that I use is Instagram. 
Um, and it's not only because you can tell intimate stories, but it's you can find amazing influencers that have this huge influence on social media and you can give them product or work with them and they can spread your message. Um, you can also track how many views they're getting on their videos or how many likes they're getting on their photos, which you have to pay attention. There may be bots liking everything, so always be um, cognizant of that. But also with Instagram, you can use hashtags you can find content, you can curate content. So for brands, I think Instagram is really where it's at. Um, not on the B2B side, but really Instagram is also free. Uh, for Facebook to get that reach, the real way is to pay. Um, but on Instagram, you can really interact with followers and you can expand your brand reach for free or by paying a marketer, but still that's more free than paying someone to then get likes on Facebook. So Instagram, I think, is really where it's at. How many people here are selling business to business? <coughs> How many people are selling business to consumer, or business to customers? Oh, wow. Okay. Instagram. <laughs> Period. And we bought LinkedIn for $26.2 billion. So like, I'm a big fan of LinkedIn because it's, it's been a really huge driver of new revenue for Microsoft. It really is a phenomenal tool for businesses, for enterprises. It's actually, when you're paying for LinkedIn, it's an unbelievable tool for lead generation, for salespeople. It's an amazing tool for recruiting and for job hunting, and as well for enterprise marketing. But for most of the people in this room, if you had to pick one, I would pick Instagram. Mm -hmm. yeah. but one, thing, one thing I wanted to add about LinkedIn that I don't think a lot of people know this. So we also use LinkedIn Elevate. LinkedIn yeah. Elevate is an employee advocacy tool that we use internally. So like tomorrow was talking about dynamic signal. That's like another one, but we use that internally. So all of our employees are on this platform. Um, I am actually. Can you explain what that is? Yeah, what, what is, what is, what is what, uh, LinkedIn Elevate is? So LinkedIn Elevate is basically a tool. It's all, think of it as like a newsroom, right? It's like almost like a publication. So I'm a curator within LinkedIn Elevate. Um, I curate about 10, broadcast a day and when I do that every so basically all of our employees who are on that app they either get a notification on their mobile or if they go to the desktop version they could see that the, those broadcast and then when they see that it's curated content specifically about topics that are Plantronics related so for example unified communications or a Plantronics <coughs> topic or consumer stereos you know so on and so forth and then they could pick and choose which content they want and they can share it onto their own networks. So what's cool about that for Plantronics is that we're using our employee's social graph to project our content. So think about if you have a, a team of like, okay, Plantronics is what, maybe a thousand people in the marketing office. You have a thousand people exponentially sharing your content to their network. So if you like multiply that all together, it's a lot of people. So then you could physically see there's like a... On their personal accounts? Like, yeah, on their personal accounts. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you, you know, the, and the only accounts that are connected to that are Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, there's Weibo too. Weibo is a new one because of, I think they probably have Asian clients. Um, but we see a lot of, uh, uh, well, what am I trying to say? We see a lot of engagement from that and there's huge value. So there's huge value as in getting business <coughs> from it. But for uh, most of the people yeah. in this room, it's probably uh, LinkedIn is just probably not going to be super yeah. relevant unless you're job hunting or you're doing or you're a salesperson looking <coughs> to generate leads mm -hmm. directly in a direct sales environment. Mm -hmm. Two things that I will say though to back on that. So one, from a consumer perspective, Instagram is absolutely my preferred <coughs> method for just kind of my own shopping and picking things. That's where I'm looking. Okay, what should I? you know, related to this, whether, you know, I'm looking for a new suitcase or somewhere to travel or something to buy or a new restaurant I should try. That's absolutely where I'm going to it now. Um, also, after managing a corporate Facebook and doing all of Looker's content, I find that I'm pulling personally away from Facebook because I'm like, oh, there's just too much. Yeah. You're not fun to me anymore. You're a work thing. You're not something that I enjoy spending time on. So I would absolutely say that from a consumer perspective, Instagram is my and like most people that I communicate with preferred way to just kind of find those new things and engage and you really enjoy following a brand. Um, one thing I will say, Chris was talking about Elevate from LinkedIn. If you're not necess if you're looking for another platform where you really want to leverage people in your network and you want to find a fairly cheap way to broaden your reach and do it in a way that feels a little bit more organic, 
maybe a little bit more personal and trying to connect with consumers. One thing that we use is we use dynamic signal and it's pretty similar to what Krush was saying and it allows someone, so a social media manager or anyone that you have, I mean, depending on the size of a company, anyone who has time to go through, add content and then deliver it to you know people within your trusted network in a way that says, hey, if you're interested in this post, you can click here to share it on LinkedIn, you can click here to share it on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and really broaden the reach. And that's something that we've done for employees at Looker, and it's allowed us to reach all of these new networks in a way that's fairly cheap, pretty organic, and in a way that you know feels really personal because they can either choose copy or they can write their own copy. And we've actually, through tracking that we've set up with Looker, um, we've been able to track things like sales to those voice storm posts or even Wall Street Journal coverage that we got. Um, Kelly Payne sitting in the back wrote a blog about Game of Thrones and analyzing data in Looker and, oh, and kind of, time. well, I won't, no spoilers. <laughs> um, <laughs> although odds call. are someone probably dies <laughs> Game of Thrones. Yeah. But um, <laughs> we had this post and we shared it in VoiceStorm to our employees and we were like, hey, if you think this is interesting, here's a really easy way for you to put it on your platform or on your platform of choice and to get it out there. Um, people really started engaging with it. Like a lot of people love Game of Thrones, so a lot of people shared it. And then we just started seeing all these press hits coming from that. And based off codes that we embed in those links, we were able to see like all of this stuff, stuff came just because we got our network excited about it and they shared it. and you never know like how far that reach can go. So I would say absolutely getting people involved on some type of ambassador or advocacy platform, it's so worth it. So you mentioned how many, about, oh, let me just, how many of you are just individuals or maybe one or two people in a company that are just trying to figure out how to grow your audience and connect with, yeah, that's what I figured. I, that's where I think we should probably spend most of the time talking about. Like, yeah. how do you how do you start from very little, and you know, what are some key tips that you can use to build your connections with the target audience that you have, like tomorrow? Well, I think also to go off advocacy, not in the same way, is influencers, um, and finding people who can spread your message for you. And it's not people within your company. If you're a small business, it's going to be like two or three or ten employees. But it's about finding those people in your community or in the world that you can give product or work with in a one-on-one -on -one basis and have them spread your message because they care about your product. So with Old School Shoes, I've found at least three local influencers or a few more who have at least 50,000 followers on Instagram and I work with them and I give them product, I bring them into the store and I say, hey, choose out a product in each of these categories and I see the product, they post photos, a, they're spreading our message to their niche audience, which is over 50,000 people, ideally, unless there's some fake followers in there, but at least 50,000 followers, they're spreading the message. We're also getting free content. So the cost of that mm -hmm. is so little to the amount that they can spread our message. So working with influencers is a must, um, and it's all about just finding the influencers and finding the market and finding those people because they already have that niche. So it's just about finding those people. Mm -hmm. Did anybody do something similar to that? I mean, I've had people reach out to me on the other end of that <laughs> and do something similar. Um, and I guess I just say yes. I yeah. just agree with her. <laughs> um, because I think, and you know, while you guys were talking and I was just thinking about, and I might just keep repeating this word every night, but I really do believe it is about the intimacy. And like when you guys were talking about you're sharing it within your own networks, um, that is because there's like an intimate connection between like you and a coworker and like you trust them. You know, and so um, when you're starting small and you have nothing and you're kind of like reaching out, trying to like get people to follow you, just like relying on your existing connections um, and also reaching out to brands that you care about, that care about your story um, and care about your product or your service. I think that that is like the key to like gaining traction is it's really like an authentic, it comes from an authentic place. I think so. Um, because. I think people get really overwhelmed with like the cheesiness of the internet and social media and they're a little overwhelmed and I think when you start out you really feel like you want to, like you have to just like have the right words and like here's all the keywords and I have to just like put on this face like I know what I'm doing and like I'm talking to nobody, you know, I'm just sitting here in, into, screaming into the void on my Instagram and I think that can be really intimidating for people. Um, 
so if we are talking about like people uh, one on one <coughs> solo entrepreneurs or people with small businesses trying to like start up, I would say uh, yes, leverage the networks that they were talking about in your own community and reach out to people who care about your brand and your service. And it's that care about your brand. You don't want to pay influencers. Um, a lot of times brand will, brands will pay influencers and those are the influencers that are being paid by multiple brands and people can see through that. So you want people who are organically against like caring about your brand and spreading that message because they want product or they want an experience and they're not about the money, they're about your brand. We'll just shut up for the influencers. You could also pay us. Like that would be cool too. <laughs> okay, so let me put you more on the spot about that. Like, why do people reach out to you? Like, I mean, like, me personally? Yeah, or just, just yeah, why would you be a concept. good person for someone for it's like, okay, we need an influencer, they reach out to you like they have. Why? What, what do you do? What is like, um, what's going to help them? So I have a, a social media presence as someone who built out a Sprinter van, live full time in my Sprinter van, and I travel around. Um, if you guys are all looking at your phones, I'm one chick travels. Um, and uh, Her house is outside. My right, house right is out outside, there. Right, I cleaned yeah. before I got up here, so if you guys want to take a tour, you can do that later. Um, and uh, basically the people that I'm reaching, I looked at my demographics recently and it surprised me. My, my highest reach is 25 to 55 year old men living on the West Coast. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't actually know if that just says anything about like the internet in general um, or if it's because I am, <laughs> I am heavily invested in like the rock climbing community which is predominantly male um, in West Coast uh, and also Van life is also predominantly male, West Coast, uh, a little bit in New Zealand and like the UK. Um, and so people reach out to me trying to, um, I think, reach out for um, inspiration. There's this like, um, there's this emotion that people are trying to capture and associate with their brand uh, that is like inspiration, adventure, uh, freedom, excitement. Um, carefree kind of thing and that is something that my brand represents and so when people reach out to me and are like oh we have this thing we think you'd like what they're really saying to me is um, we have this thing we want to associate with your message because it is true to our message so um, one of the things that I also recommend uh, my early clients do when they're developing a brand voice in social media marketing is kind of like just talk out loud about yourself and your brand and why you care about it. Like, what are the keywords that are associated with it? Like, what do you, when people think about you, what do you want them to think? You know, like fun, exciting, dynamic, adventurous, you know, sleek, professional. Uh, and then also, you got your hashtags right there. So um, those are kind of like, yeah, that's why people would reach out to me, really. So we're talking a lot about Instagram um, and most of us are in business here, so what are some best practices for using Instagram to reach our, a client, to reach a, a customer? Can you think of any some, like, some best practices that we good? I mean, we post things. What's going to be engaging? We love to talk. Yeah. So we post, we have three brand values, craftsmanship, responsibility, and adventure. Every single thing we do, every single thing we say, every single thing we write is about those three brand values. We post every single day, and I post, I'm the one that controls all of it because I want to be able, it's, it's not a broadcast, it's a conversation. For Ventana? For Ventana, yes. yeah. I mean, I have four different accounts that I deal to do different things for my personal life, but Ventana is the main one. Every single day, we post on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, Instagram being the most important one, and every single day, we try to have at least one cool video or photo that's visually appealing that reinforces our brand values. Craftsmanship, responsibility, adventure. And we've also developed this program where we take trash from other companies. Like all this is, this is forwards from the 1800s. And we've got this giant list of partners. We don't pay for wood. We get it given to us by all the Monterey Bay Aquarium and SoCal Vineyards and Venus Spirits and, and the Western Flyer, John Steinbeck's boat. They give us all this wood and then we're constantly telling the stories of our partners. And, hashtagging them and, and tagging them with their Instagram accounts and their Facebook accounts so that we can amplify our message through our partners and then they get excited that their trash is being used for something cool and then they repost and then they retweet and they put it on Facebook and so we built a partner network where we're constantly reinforcing each other and so essentially marketing is just storytelling. 
Every single day, we tell a new story that's visually appealing, that maps to our brand values. Do you guys use Instagram stories? We use Instagram stories every day. Yep. I do, and I use regular Instagram every day, and everything else goes to Facebook and Twitter as well. But a tip is, and some people do this, but I think it's a really bad practice, to connect the different social networks so that one of them then broadcasts to the other ones. So you see that a lot. Somebody will post on Instagram and they'll have it connected to their Twitter account and then it'll just be an Instagram post on Twitter. The problem is, is that each one is a different social network that behaves in different ways. So if I tag the Western Flyer Foundation, which is where we get our wood from the boat that Steinbeck sailed into the Sea of Cortez, on Instagram and I promote it on Twitter with a connection just straight from Instagram, then the tags are different because their account on Instagram is different than their account on Twitter, and then they'll never even see that I've put it on Twitter because they won't, it won't tag them correctly. Mm -hmm. So I, I reformulate every single post every single day for each social network and properly tag and properly format and properly make sure the text is in the right place for 280 characters versus this many characters versus Instagram where it's gonna click more and then it'll cut off. So I make sure that my partners are tagged above the fold as opposed to below the fold. So there's a whole bunch of curation that happens. Yes, please don't cross post. I'm just going to yeah, second that. Please do not cross post. Do <laughs> but every single day, tell a really cool visual story about your brand that maps to your brand values. Yeah. And I think so how, I was like, how do you do that, though? I mean, how do you, for one thing, how many hours a day do you work on that? <laughs> <laughs> and, and he has a machine. I'm addicted to it. I'm yeah. addicted to it. Like, it's become a problem. So, <laughs> you know what I do is, every morning, before, I mean, I want to write a book called Marketing Your Underwear. Or Marketing I'll, I'll read it. Right? <laughs> I'll watch it. <laughs> Every single day that I'm posting, either way, I, I'm in bed. Before I get out of bed in the morning, I do my posts. Yeah. Well, she's already at work. <laughs> and then before I go, to, while I'm in bed at night, I usually prep them for the next morning, and then I tweak them in the morning, and I post them. And so you post I'm marketing day. from bed. If you post a picture and a video every day, um, is it are you reposting other pictures, or is this new a new picture every single? Usually, day? it's a new picture, except I take full advantage of Throwback Thursday and Flashback Friday to repost all <laughs> yeah. stuff. I do a thing called Sold but Not Forgotten. Uh -huh. Yeah every Thursday and every Friday, and I showcase previous boards or clothing or whatever that we've sold in the past so that I can show it to our new followers. But um, so I make my, part, my business partner take little videos and photos of their work working because people love to see the process, and I bug him every single day to send me new content where I drive to the workshop and I do it myself. So if that's real fast the audience, it'll get to you, but does anybody have an example, like they're struggling for uh, to post every day and maybe like, from the panel, we can help you. Anybody have a night? Okay. And maybe you don't have to do it every day. That can be overkill. Okay. I don't think you have but uh, but yeah, more regular. Okay. What was the what do you so do? So what would you do with a cleaning business? A cleaning How business. Okay. Mm. Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. You have to you have to understand is that should that cleaning business even maybe even be on Instagram? You know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. I'm not just to be straight up honest. I can, are you telling a really good interesting story? Is it compelling? <laughs> Is it exactly what these two have said? Um, you know, is it resonating with that community, basically? I would think, especially like specifically for a cleaning business, I, mean, I know someone who is, my sister is very, very, very into cleaning and very into talking about cleaning. <laughs> and I mean, I really think for things like that, for products like cleaning or makeup tutorials or, you know, a lot of those things, I think that the how-to space, yeah. especially huge. for mm. reaching consumers, is huge. And so what I would recommend there are tips on, you know, like before and after photos for things. A great thing you can do with stories is like, hey, this is how you properly do this. This is how you use this product and actually being able to let people see it working. Um, I think that would be a huge yeah. space for cleaning and are absolutely you what you would want to do. Service? I can think like of come out and clean yeah. your house kind of a thing. Yeah. Or I can think of ten different things you can do to tell a cool story. Products. But I would think the simplest thing you would want to do is do targeted advertising okay. using Facebook. Agreed. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. That's what I would do. And also looking at like next door. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Ads on next door yeah. would be a huge thing. Yeah, um, that's true too. But I think that he had made a couple really great points that I just want to go back to. One is just really consistency because I know, especially mm -hmm. Kai, I was talking about the beginning when you start and you don't have a lot of followers, maybe you don't have any followers, or it's just the beginning and you're 
kind of navigating and testing out and figuring out what your brand is, it's really uncomfortable. You send this post and you're like, okay, where, where's my likes? Like, yeah. what, what, what are my feedback? Why isn't anyone clicking on it? And so I really think understanding consistency, consistency early on. Um, and then he was also talking about leveraging partners. So one thing, obviously for Looker, we're thinking about it on the enterprise side, but something that you can do for a personal or for a smaller brand is really thinking, okay, who's someone who's either a partnership, maybe, you know, your products pair well together, or maybe your brands pair well together. Like what Kaya was talking about, mm -hmm. who's someone who's going to be mutually interested in making sure this succeeds and really leveraging that, talking to them, you know, even hopping on a phone call or even just starting to retweet their content or comment on their stuff or you know like tag their stories and be like hey i loved this this is great mm -hmm. i find that really giving people love and sharing content that's not necessarily only going to benefit you and your brand and your product but stuff that's really going to be interesting to the type of audience that you're trying to be bring in and really help you to start to build a little bit more of a partner or a mutual influencer network is huge um i know one thing that we do at looker like you know i mean it's it's data and it's it's business intelligence and dashboards. Like it's not necessarily something that is, you know, huge research on like a Friday or a three day weekend or during the holidays. And a way that we really leverage that time is understanding that our partners are in that same spot. And so sharing content that, you know, another team or another person, even if it's just you, is going to be motivated to make sure that content succeeds. So maybe it's a picture of their product or it's something that you've done together or a story of you guys together if you are able to do that. Or even just sharing like, hey, this person had like a great travel blog or, you know, this person went to this place and I really loved the to do's and, you know, the things that they shared. I want to do this when I go there. Really leveraging that and people who are going to be motivated to get that content out there is just going to help you tenfold expand your reach mm -hmm. and it's going to help you just start to also build those great relationships because then they're likely to do it for you mm -hmm. like I, what, I just wanted to go back to what she was saying with the cleaning with cleaning music you should also check out google adwords yeah mm -hmm. without google adwords like we're not it's not even really a question about this panel but i think anybody who has a small business and they're starting out should focus on their seo and google adwords next and, and then go and into being, social media being, by the way too <laughs> yeah, the Bing, sorry. But that is, that is, because mm -hmm. people. That's still around. Yeah. It's still around. <laughs> it's just David. It's just market share, $3 billion business, and yes, it's still around. And I want to disregard Yelp. Um, one thing I oh, yeah. refer to Yelp as like, there's the dark rabbit hole of Yelp, which is when you <sighs> pay them for their ad stuff, which does not work, and they lock you into a contract and sort of like trick you into signing it. <clears throat> but you can always ask your customers, for reviews and say, hey, would you review me or I'll give you 10% off your next the, cleaning. Be careful, that's against policy. No, they, they Is that, said that they don't want you to do it, but it's not against policy. Okay, um, yeah, that may have changed, but you can ask for I reviews, I don't think you're allowed to give. Um, yeah. Or I don't know, I don't know about, maybe not the 10%, check the policy, but ask, can you can ask for reviews and that's not yeah, a result. Yeah, that's right, you know? she's right. Yeah. I was just wondering if you could speak about hashtags. Sure. And from your perspective, how they're used, how you find them. What She's are essential. God's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> essential to your business. Think about hashtags as metadata, meaning that it's a way to describe what the content is to a machine. And to some extent That's to people really as well. Mm -hmm. That's really the best way to think about it. So the hashtag, I only really use them on Instagram. Yeah. A um, little bit on Twitter, never on Facebook. Never on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. And you, it's good that we're all in Korean. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm with David it. here. Uh, <laughs> hit the hashtags below the fold, meaning, you know, kind of down the, down the comment post on Instagram, describing clearly what it is. So that Instagram, the system, understands who to show it to. And then also, if somebody is interested in finding or they're following that, that, content, that hashtag, when they click on it or when they search for that word, woodworking, surfboards, ocean, <laughs> they, there's a higher likelihood that yours is going to show up. You can also follow hashtags now. You can now follow yeah. hashtags. Yeah. So I would do like this one, amazing new red, redwood surfboard made from, you know, reclaimed floorboards, hashtag surfboard, hashtag ocean conservation, hashtag sustainability, hashtag woodworking, right? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do like hashtag pool. 
something generic. It would be more specific to this. And sometimes it goes viral, and sometimes we had a post that went to about 400,000 views this week. And it was just because we had something super cool to look at, and we had the right hashtags to help the system categorize it and show it to the right people. And I think it's also about having a go-to list of hashtags, so you're not thinking on the fly, True. oh, what hashtag should I use today? For example, for old school shoes, for every single brand, we have a list of 30 hashtags, which is what you're allowed, and we just copy and paste them. So it takes time in the beginning to think of those hashtags, but in the end, it saves you time because you're just copy and pasting those. You're getting more likes on your posts, which Instagram is a popularity game. So the more likes you have and the more followers you have, the more followers you will get. So on the tags, the hashtags, I have uh, two different notepads in my phone yeah. uh, that just have my, like, cause I have like rock climbing hashtags that I want to take advantage of and like outdoor sports hashtags. And then there's the van life hashtags. Mm -hmm. And so depending on the post, I'll just put this block or this block. Yeah. And then I can add extras if I feel like I need to. Do you to. put it in the very like first post or in the very first, you know, like not your comment, but the description on Instagram. Cause I know some people I've, I've noticed start putting like in the comment, they start putting like their hashtags. I does, go back and forth. There's no matter? specific rhyme or reason. As long as they're there, okay. they'll start being seen in every piece of those hashtags, right? So then you could go look at them. Yeah. Okay. We use emojis. So we'll use four emojis. So even if someone opens the post, they'll have to scroll down to see the hashtags. And we'll go back and, or I will actually, go back and delete the hashtags later because I think a post looks more clean when you don't have the hashtags, and if it's a month later, no one's really searching for your hashtags. It's only that first, couple days, like, mm -hmm. couple yeah. even hours, if that, yeah. yeah. So using those hashtags and then deleting them and make your post look beautiful. I don't know if I would recommend that. Really? But I've had people come find me through much, much older posts, mm -hmm. ones that were really popular, like 20,000, 50,000 views kind of thing. But if the, um, if the tags are there, but if you delete them, they go away. Oh, you delete I them? I delete them, Oh, yeah. interesting. But yeah, we don't we have don't do any that. viral, crazy just, uh, content. It may make sense on that content. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't delete. Wait, I, I missed it. I, I do. I, it just looks cleaner, oh, just in my cleaner. opinion. Okay. Okay. Um, I agree, it does look nicer. But, but we, we don't delete because we, I, anytime there's a picture of a surfboard in any post, we use hashtag Ventana surfboards. Mm -hmm. And that's because I also want to curate my own feed totally. so that if somebody clicks on Ventana surfboards tomorrow, on the hashtag, they're gonna see every single other post that we have that's got a picture of a surfboard in it. So it's actually a way to push people into a different sort of a view that I want them to see. Mm -hmm. So it's also a way for me to categorize my posts in addition to the fact that it helps Instagram show it to the right people. But let me ask for you guys, like what is your, when you're using Instagram, what is your overall goal, your marketing objective? Is it for them to see and stay on Instagram or to come to your site to buy something? How are you tracking that? Because it's very difficult to track influencer marketing and what that specifically is doing for your business sure. if you don't have... But you can track, track the link and the yeah. email on Instagram now. If you have a business page, you have a lot of analytics that have opened up. And so um, you can see, plus or minus each week, how many people have clicked on the link in your site. And so you can like put that to your homepage or an action item, which I recommend. So if you have a sign-up sheet or a product you want to sell or whatever, like put that in your Instagram bio. Um, and then email as well, so people can like reach out to you if you have like a service or something like that. But um, I think your point is that it does likes and engagement of the post don't really mean anything unless you're actually converting to some set of yes. business objectives. Yeah, if there is, you know, like followers is not an objective, yeah. sales is an objective. So for us, it's about having a constant conversation with people who are interested in our brand because some percentage of those will convert to customers over time. We've probably done twenty-five thousand dollars in business just because of Instagram. People find the boards, they go, oh my God, these are beautiful, and then they start a direct message or a comment thread or something, and I'm, I mean, literally within minutes, I'm having a conversation back with that person and trying to close sales. So it's, yeah, it's like, it's like the customer service aspect of what you're doing. It's like a conversation, day -day. it's yeah. not a broadcast. But then totally. how it's not chronological, how much is that messing with stuff? I think that's amazing that it's not chronological. Mm -hmm. What they mean by that, for those, for those of you that are new, is, is that it used to be that when, if, if I posted on Instagram and then I posted again and then you posted, that, and I was, you were following the two of us, you would see my two posts and her post and everything was in chronological order. But as they've grown the network and there are thousands of people following thousands of other people, it, it, it winds up, you wind up not necessarily seeing the things that are most relevant at the top of your feed. 
And so what it's allowed, I think, Instagram to do, or Facebook, who owns Instagram, to do, is to make sure that the right people are seeing the right posts at the right time. It also gives them a revenue stream because now it allows them to charge for advertising to get your post up to the thread. And frankly, I think it's great that they do advertising because otherwise we wouldn't be able to subsidize this free service that we're all taking advantage of. And said from the person who works in digital advertising. <laughs> and I think we're also tracking a really good tool is called Linktree. Um, and I don't know if anyone else has something that I recommend for this, but it's a single link that you put in your bio and then it takes you to a web page where you can have multiple links. So you could say, hey, we want for old school shoes, hey, we want to lead people to our Converse collection or hey, we want to lead people to our empl employment page. And you can set those up and also track those. It's called Linktree. Um, so that's a really good way to also track if people are responding well to pages and how people are finding pages. In Instagram. In Instagram, yes. Linktree. So I have a Linktree. question. For how many people in the audience, how many of you are thinking about trying to manage multiple platforms? So like maybe Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, like maybe all of them. Okay. And are you posting that manually or how many of you are kind of are you interested in tools that will help you scale that a little bit more? Yeah. So what okay. do you use? I heard you like one. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. such I, a leading like, question. question. Yeah. I just want to know like, if this is actually yeah. interesting because yeah. I understand, you know, like on the enterprise, yeah. like data and BI, maybe a little bit less interesting to the room tonight. But um, so one thing that we did when I started at Looker, we didn't have social media. We, we had marketing and we had sales and we had global customers and we weren't really thinking about social and so we really just kind of over the last year started building it um, and at first I was posting manually on everything multiple times a day and was like I had time for nothing else because it is it's a lot mm -hmm. to curate this content all the time especially when you absolutely have to make sure it's different across each platforms like if someone sees a if I see a hashtag on LinkedIn I'm just like not interested in <laughs> anything else that you have to say. So I would say my absolute favorite tool, and I do believe that they have a free offering as well, is Buffer. How does anyone in, does anyone in the room use Buffer? Oh, so it's, How it's, about HubSpot or Sprout Social? I switched from Sprout, Sprout to Buffer. Or I switched from Buffer to Sprout. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's, Why do you like using Buffer? Yeah, so HubSpot, Buffer, Social, Sprout. Yeah. Those are all great. Yeah, but then you have Yeah, I, I think that we have a, we do have a paid yeah. one, but I know for the free, well, the, okay, so the great things about Buffer are, is it allows you to schedule content out. So for example, if you know there's going to be an event or you know, you know, there's going to be a specific social media day and you want to have things ready. I know you were talking about like going through your post at night. I do that on Buffer, kind of seeing like what's gonna come up the next morning. It allows you to schedule content out. It allows you to schedule and manage different platforms and also customize it. So you can be like, okay, here's my short text on Twitter. Maybe the copy is a little bit more fun. I've included some of those hashtags. Here's my copy on LinkedIn. I'm taking into account that these are more business people. I'm taking into account that it's gonna be maybe a more technical audience. Here's my copy on Facebook. It's gonna be a little bit more personal. You know, those are more people who have a connection to our brand. Schedule them out, take advantage of different times. Does it, does it let you actually tag like other businesses? And It will, so what I, the way that I work around that is on Facebook, it's really nice. If you're managing the page, you can go in and edit it. So then I'll go in and edit it. On LinkedIn, that is something that does hurt you when you're posting on Buffer, you can't say like, Hey, like Looker yeah. and LinkedIn. Yeah. And so a way that I'll do that is I'll put it in Buffer first to shorten the link and just kind of like see how it's gonna look and not actually push the post and then manually yeah. push the post if it is something that we're doing with a partner or a customer or someone that I really wanna leverage their network as well. And another really great thing about Buffer, um, they're actually a Looker customer and they have analytics built into the platform. So you can go back and you can see like, hey, what time of day has been performing well for me? What days of the weeks are performing well for me? What type of content is performing well? And you can actually see your top posts in terms of links. Because I know we were all talking about like followers and likes are important. You know, it is a number good scheme. It does have some popularity in it. But at the end of the day, you know, for your cleaning business, you don't want people to just see that post. You want people to come back and to register with you. Um, you know, you want people to come back and take some type of action. And so Buffer allows you to look and see 
what are people actually clicking on? You know, what are they really engaging with? And it gives you, it's a pretty like lightweight tool to start helping you not only scale, but improve your content and really see what's working and maybe what's not working. So. I th but I think, yeah. I think when you're looking at your business, I think you should ultimately think, right? Like don't, don't try to spread yourself too thin by getting on all these platforms, then signing up for a service where they're getting, they're taking like $40 a month from you yeah. to start posting all this content, which is, yes, there is like a rhyme reason to do that, but in the beginning, mm -hmm. just, I would think about this, think about it, like double take on it, just focus on what platform you wanna be on. So if you have like a brand like her, who is talking about Van life. Van life. <laughs> right? Like that like Instagram seems like the mm -hmm. way for that. So just do that, right? It's mm -hmm. working. So just keep doing that. And then maybe spend more money on Instagram, not on something that you don't need to. So you know right. I would stuff agree with like that. that. In my own personal experience, I started really on Instagram and I had a Facebook page and it wasn't really anything I put any effort into. And only recently have I started contributing more strictly to the Facebook page and my Twitter account and those are generating are starting to gain their own followers and content uh, or followers through that but yeah I started with Instagram and that's like the strongest that's like that's that's carrying the load really Ted do you have a question? I do so I would imagine a lot of people here want to focus on uh, reaching local people here local local gotcha local as a business gotcha but, um, which I do, but I also want to reach people across the nation with my business. Yeah. So do you have any tips to find, besides like hashtag Sanders, that sort of thing, how to reach people locally and then, you know, so, so two, two things I would say to that is I would use Google AdWords because it has geo-targeting. There's all these specific ways you can target your ads in specific regions of the United States. That's one. You could also do that with Facebook. LinkedIn and Twitter and Instagram and Instagram and you can do that through Instagram through Facebook ads uh, you're spending money though so you have to think about that so you got to pay to play that's what it's that's what it is these days I would say it's very cool to be exclusive um, and saying like you know if you're trying to reach local people having a locals vibe and like local deals can still reach people in other areas because then you've kind of created a thing, you know? So mm -hmm. I think that like, and like having local pride and I think Santa Cruz in general, already we have our own brand. Like Santa Cruz is a brand. It's so like, I mean, there is a lot of desire for Santa Cruz itself. <clears throat> and so I think playing off of that locals attitude can generate like local customers. Um, but I think that being able to reach an audience farther away um, I mean, yeah, I would say that I think that would probably be a good tactic as well. Yeah, you, you know, we'll, yeah. Go I mean, I was saying we'll tell people like, hey, we got this. Po I did it this week. We had this post of a, it was a one minute half-assed video that was hyperlapse of my partner putting um, resin on a surfboard, and for whatever reason, it, it Instagram realized that people liked it and they spread it, and we got eighty thousand over eighty thousand views. A woodworking site picked it up because we had the right hashtags that has 400,000 followers, they got a quarter of a million views on it. So I went, wow, this is a really cool post. So then I went out to Sustainable Surf, which is an eco-friendly surf organization we work with, and said, hey, this post is doing really well. If you guys post it, you might be able to bring in a bunch of new people that are interested in eco-surfboards. They went and posted it. They're up to like 1,800 views right now. So once I have content that I know works, I'll just go to other services and say, hey, you should post our content and tag us because it's gonna help your business too. And that's helped us grow um, our following worldwide and close board sales outside of just the Santa Cruz area. So leveraging others that you think can get value out of your content, I think helps a lot. And I think since it's a, social media is always is just about that two-way relationship and that's why it works. Um, and to go back to the engagement question on Instagram, um, influencers, I can't stress that enough, also running contests and giving away something. People love free stuff, they tag their friends, they're spreading your brand message for you. You're not doing any of the work. Um, this year with Old School Shoes, I ran a 20 day giveaway and I worked with 31 local businesses, including Jenna Lee, who owns ESO Wellness and many others, and we were able to create a digital footprint because we worked together with other local businesses. 
Um, and I think just also adding a call to action. So giving people something to talk about. If you just say, look at this, that's just, they're gonna scroll through their feed. But if you say, hey, what do you think about this? Or we posted a picture, reposted a picture of, some, of this couple wearing a black beanie and a brown beanie and we said which do you prefer and giving people something to engage on and that's really like that sweet spot of saying hey tell us what you think we care about what you have to say and that's beautiful because they think that you care and whether you care or not which you <laughs> probably do because they'll probably convert to a sale it's really about garnering that relationship and by giving people questions and something to do then they engage. So it's really setting it up for them and saying, here, here's your question or engagement on a plate. And they say, okay, I'll eat it up and I'll give you what you want. Also, if, so, oh, yeah, oh, say, if you think about that, people love giving their opinions on yes. social media. <laughs> so that's a very easy it's way. It's a story <laughs> can be <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, question. Um, and generally, she was okay. first. Okay, generally you first then. Um, mine's actually not so much a question, but I was going to say, because earlier you said how, how as like businesses, you were asking, like, should we, how can we, um, how can we, um, like how do we find time to create the content? And then you guys have the great ideas of using things like the buffer and spot and all those different ones. Um, I was going to say what I do because I wear a lot of hats for my business as a small business and I'm always like on the go and jumping everywhere that... Um, I open up notes on my iPhone, which I think everyone probably has, and I just, when I have an idea, I just talk into it, and I put my, like, what my post idea is, and then I have this, like, huge list of all these post ideas, which then I could, if I, you know, maybe I put the money into actually scheduling them out, but then, <laughs> which I haven't done that yet, <laughs> this is good ideas, um, but then as I'm busy through the day and I'm like, oh, I forgot to do a post today, I can just go and search a keyword in my notes and pop it up and I copy and paste that post and I have my copy and pasted hashtags like you said. Yep. And then like that's a super easy way I feel like that mm -hmm. I found to have. And then I have in your photos, you can make folders and I have a social media post folder. Mm -hmm. And I like move everything into there that I want to do. And that makes it so much faster when I'm on the go and I'm like, I'm driving, I'm at this stoplight, or at the, no, I'm sorry, I'm parked at the gas station. <laughs> I'm, I'm parked at the gas station, I'm sorry. <laughs> No, but, but she's done it. Uh, there, I know there's one post she did a couple, like a month ago, where she's like running and she had an idea, and she's like gave somebody there. You know, the camera's like, can you actually do a video for me real fast? It's like while well, she was running Pacific Grove. So, yeah. Okay. Um, Two things. Okay. What is your favorite repost app, and how are you reposting? Are you taking a picture and actually reposting and hashtagging, or are you reposting the uh, post? I use yeah. repost app. I repost app, yeah. and yeah. I paid for it because I don't yeah. want it to say yeah. Yeah. repost app. I paid for it also. I was $5. Yeah. I take screen. I don't like the way that the repost app, and this is just like a choosy, picky thing. I don't like the way that the repost app has the username. I will always tag the person. You pay for it. You pay for it. Oh. Yeah. Well, super cheap. I'll just take a yeah. screenshot and repost it and do a little camera emoji and mention the person and tag them. Um, ask after asking their permission, but usually if someone tags you or mentions you, they want you to repost their content. But I don't like the way that. Yeah, well, I just it's yeah. cheap. So well, I it seems like reposting with and it's repost reposting app, a higher quality. Image you get permission yeah. because you're yeah. reposting versus snapping and yeah. posting yeah. yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Plantronics, we never repost anything. It's always all original content. Yeah. But um, just a cool little sneak. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Same with us, unless it's our stuff. Yeah. But there, so, but I can say there is a cool little sneaky way where you could, you go to Instagram Desktop and then you, can you, you go to View Page Source and then you can on Windows on on any on, on Mac on Mac or any on any computer you just go to View Page Source or on Mac right and then you can go into the. A metadata of the website and um, uh, do a control find like the image or the image and then the li literally the image is there and you can highlight it and then put it in a lewd link and you have the image right there you can like save it to your computer. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to help me with that one. <laughs> so, you don't need to use a repost app. No, okay. You don't need to do any of that so the image is just there. I have a second question. 
What's that? Video, yeah, video doesn't yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. Video images yeah. work. Well, and yeah. I personally like the repost because I want people to see where it came from. Because well, that's I'm all about reposting other people. Just, yeah, yeah, you just tag the person. Repost yeah. and it shows from. So personally, I like that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah you just that's you still do that with the papers. Yeah. You know, yeah. Copy and paste it and say reposted from, from right. this person. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then I also heard, recently heard that if you go in and edit your Instagram, that it takes the analytics aren't as good. They're gonna dock you for it. Do you know about that? You're not know. anybody? Uh, Maybe. That would make sense it. to me. Okay. One well, of that's... the influencers that we work with, uh, we always tell our influencers to mention us because a lot of times people aren't necessarily look, clicking on the photo and looking to see who's tagged in that photo. Um, and she wouldn't actually change the description right away because she said it did you change. You have to wait 24 hours yeah. yeah. they'll dock yeah. you. Actually, yeah. I heard 30 days. 30 days. I was going to ask I mean, I'm always so, editing this stuff, yeah. and it seems to be okay, but I, if I were Instagram, based on what I know about their business goals, I would dock me. <laughs> if, mm -hmm. if, you, if you know a little bit about what they're trying to accomplish as a business, you can start to get in their head a little bit and realize why they might dock you for that. Yeah. Next question. Why do you care if the analytics are docked? I mean, does it mean you're not going to be promoted Yeah, because I think it, th there's a, I can envision people trying to, um, trying to game the system by like, hey, I just posted this thing and now it's starting to do really well with this audience and so now I'm going to edit it and put it in a different hashtag mm -hmm. and see if I can get it to spread to this audience. Yeah. And if I were working at Facebook, I would assume that might be fraudulent behavior of some kind and I would probably dock that poster. As yeah. somebody that works in the industry, that's the way I would think about it. But I don't know. I, I've never really researched it, but it makes a lot of sense. I mean, I edit it because I do like spelling mm -hmm. issues. Same. Forget yeah, me too. Like, I forget to tag yeah. somebody or yeah. whatever. I edit them all the time. Okay, two more questions um, in the very back. There's been a fair bit of talk about Instagram. I don't know how much sponsored content the panelists right. will cover, but, but do you guys know what some of the tools you're willing to do or in your own practices? If there's a better way to do sponsored content on Instagram than using Facebook Ad Manager? No. Or, like, do you get analytics from any other platforms? Because it sucks. No, yeah, you got it. Yeah, unfortunately, you have you know you have to use uh, Business Manager or Power Editor to create the ads. Um, you know, Facebook is not letting any other. Well, I guess recently we heard today that Hootsuite you can directly post to Instagram from Hootsuite now, like literally. But yeah. that's not yeah. sponsored posts. So yeah, sponsored posts are directly from Business Manager, which. I'm like, curious to know what's wrong with it. Yeah, that. yeah, what's wrong with it? Yeah. Facebook, I'm going to go and push it for like a day. It's what? just atrocious. Who here used it? Has anybody used Ad Manager from, from Facebook? Yeah. I think it's all the content. Yeah. yeah. It's like an analyst made it. I mean, the interface is crap. Huh. We're talking about the same thing, right? Like Blue. Yeah, or yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. Yeah. Relative to like AdWords, I think it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I think it's amazing too. Like Wait, what? Money. I work with the team that built, I work with the team that builds that almost every day through yeah. the partnership that we have with them at Microsoft. Send me the information and I'll get it to the right people. I already dealt with the okay. people. But yeah, I mean my main my main issue with them is pretty easy. They tier the idea of a post into a grouping and from a grouping down to an actual post yeah. and then there's a sub layer of that, none of which is intuitive. Absolutely. You don't really have any good feedback. If you look at the analytics, it's really generic stuff like yeah. It's vague age groups. It's really not very accurate when it comes to location. Mm -hmm. I think those are pretty honest, you know, yeah. criticisms. But I want to think it's not Jared, you have a question? No, I think it's amazing. I did. I, I was surprised you guys have not mentioned, uh, I do media marketing. You guys have not mentioned getting people off social, referral links, trackable links, coupon codes. I, I, well, because we were stuck on Instagram real. the whole time. Yeah. That's yeah. Why. <laughs> so I, yeah. I think you, you brought it up, like the people in the audience are really dealing with like ROI, direct on sale, if I spend 100, how much can I make? So using that referral link, trackable, oh, we spent 100, we made two sales. Okay, great, at least it's some reference point. Um, I've decided I'm gonna start like a Santa Cruz sharing syndicate. And to your point of like, if we all start sharing together from our businesses, I've been tagging Monica's business, you see my post first, and I tag you, and so that's organically working as opposed to paying influencers. So that's a fun thing, but it has yeah. to be done so organically and grassroots. Getting conversion so. tracking and attribution, and that's like a whole other science that we probably need a whole other session on. Yeah. yeah so like within like within Facebook business ma business manager, if you start that and look at that, right, there is the Facebook pixel. You can put this Facebook yeah. pixel on all of your web pages. And then on that Facebook pixel, who's you done that? I'm just curious. 
And yeah. Google and Bing and yeah. all of these. Yeah. On that Facebook pixel, you can put event codes. Those specific event codes are add to cart, purchase, page view, mm -hmm. lead. And you could literally start tracking people from add to your goal that you wanted. And then you have all that stuff, you have a lot of information, you can give it back to your boss or yourself, and you could show the ROI on your ad spend. But you just have to, you know, set that, set that all up. And it, it's just, another, yeah, it's, it's paid media, it's another world, right? So, but that's if you, like this panel is about how to drive real results, and I think in the age of social media now, that organic reach is dying. Literally, you have to understand how to use the paid side. So using the paid side will drive your results if you're a small business and you have to pay, you know, you have to, pay to play. I, um, I mean, I think sort of, but yeah. we're seeing, depending on your business, if yeah. influencers, 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 it's, you're not paying them. I mean, you're paying a little bit in product or trade, but you're not paying them. And the reach that we have seen is far greater than the reach that we have ever seen on Facebook with paid ads. We pay too. I'm running ads right now, but um, the organic stuff, if it's done right, is way, way, way more successful. Yes. Probably less so in the enterprise space. Yes. So final comments, because we want to wrap it up here. Any like, things we didn't bring out that you guys want to want to say? Um, yeah, I just kind of want to finish a little bit on the tracking. Um, I mean, so at, at Looker, we, data is really important to what we do, but one thing that we make sure that we add you know, to every single post, something um, we add a UTM code that's going to let us track it on Google Analytics so we can really see like what medium did this person come in from. We also then track that back to Salesforce campaigns, but again, that would be more of an enterprise. But for Google Analytics, you can, they have, oh my gosh, what is it like? Google UTM Builder, or like there's free Google Dev links that you can use, and you can add, just basically like think of it as a footer to your link and say like, hey, how did this person come to my website? So we do that for different channels, you can do it for different contests that you may be doing, and then afterwards, like they do have basic analytics on it where you can do some tracking and see like, hey, people who are coming to my website, am I getting more people coming here from Facebook? Am I getting more people coming here from LinkedIn? Am I getting more people coming here from Instagram or from Twitter? And then you can also really see like what those people are doing, what pages they're entering your website on, what their bounce rate is like, and where they're leaving that website. Because like, yes, while this all is about social media, a lot of you are here because you want to use social media to drive that next step. And it's probably getting someone to your website or to register for an appointment or to purchase something and adding tracking codes to those links that you're putting in your post will really let you see what channels are working for you, what pages are working for you, where people are leaving, and really how people are engaging and where they're taking that next step. So they absolutely, links, and the more details you can get into your links, the better. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, final words thoughts, of words of wisdom. I think for um, people starting out, and you know, I think we all come from a very different place or different backgrounds, but um, for me, it's all really about telling your story. And um, it can be intimate and it can be messy at the beginning, I think, particularly for small startups, for people who are really like in that kind of grabbing for the first few followers stage, having things that are um, like, hey, today we got our first shipment of jars that we're going to put candles in, you know, like we're making candles or whatever. Like today we got our first shipment of jars and like this is the essential oils we're going to put in here, you know, like really breaking it down um, actually is really engaging because then people care. Like why do I care about your product? Okay, you're selling uh, candles that smell nice. Like why do I care, right? It's like, oh, I'm going to tell you, like here's where I started because we love the underdog. Um, and that's just where I, I have more expertise in that uh, area than, than these guys. Um, but, you know, so that would be where I'm saying uh, is do that. Also, um, take pictures of people and beautiful places yeah. and doing cool things. So if you're struggling to figure out what images to put with your content, um, people really like faces um, and, uh, and th people doing things. So try and uh, focus on those. I think the algorithms favor that too because they yeah. can do facial recognition in the posts and I've, we find whenever there's a face, yeah. Instagram or Facebook, whoever promotes it more. Okay, what's your final? Well, my final thought, if, if it sounds like the audience is more in regards to like small business and stuff like that, I would just Shopify and Facebook, connect mm -hmm. the two. <laughs> Shopify and Facebook. And Instagram also. Yeah, but Shopify, yeah, <laughs> Shopify Facebook is your holy grail. 
Yeah, but so. I'm, what I'm saying, yeah. you can tag products in Facebook and Instagram if you're connected to Shopify. You can literally buy products from both posts. It's amazing. Yeah, it's like super cool. Huh? Thank That's you. My final thoughts, yeah. um, I think my takeaway is if you're struggling with social media or you don't really know what you're doing, is to really start small and think about who your audience is and start with one network. So just start with Instagram or Facebook or whatever you think fits right with your audience and do it really well. And if that's working and you have a ton of extra time, then go on other networks. But most likely as a small business owner, it's really about that focusing on that one network, building strong relationships and converting to sales. And if you're struggling, you have two really good consultants here. Yeah. Yeah. I know both okay. of them. Like, seriously, <laughs> hire them. For me, three quick things. One is, um, Facebook is the best for events. Mm -hmm. And paying to promote events to a local audience through Facebook events is amazing. Matt and I are doing an event together on April 28th. If any artisans are in the room, Ocean Dream Fair, get in touch with one of us and we'll help you understand what that is. Facebook events, um, super important. Never put text on images. The services can parse out when there's text on images and they'll completely suppress the post and a lot of times you're not even allowed to pay for an ad if there's text on the image. And then the third thing is, give back. Give back to the community. Figure out what nonprofit is related to your business thematically and then give back. Do events for that charity, give back a percentage of profits, and then promote the hell out of the fact that you're doing that and tag those nonprofits and have them promote your business for you. We give 5% of profits to ocean conservation and ocean conservation organizations have given us a lot of love and have spread our word for us because we do the right thing for them. Use charities to your benefit and do the right thing for the community. Thank you guys for coming. Since there's a social media event, Sit down. If I can get all of the, the panelists right here looking at me, I want to get a picture of all of you.